All right, so if our journeys are anything like, you're much like me in the sense where when you first got your camera, in my case, it was the Canon T3i, you go out and get the nifty 50, which is like the 50 millimeter for your respective camera manufacturer. In my case, it was the 50 millimeter 1.8 Canon lens. It's just a crappy plastic lens. It was the fastest lens for the money. It was cheap, uh, so it made it very affordable so I can get it with my camera along with the kit lens that came with it. Um, and it was, like I said, fast, so it gave you that shallow depth of field, the bokeh that everyone's been chasing. Um, but you never really take enough initiative or thought to understand, you know, why am I using a photo lens for video? Uh, and why do people, you know, even use this nifty 50? Why is this the lens that everyone covets and loves? Um, and why don't I start off with a cinema lens? Or what are the benefits of this still lens versus this cinema lens? And today we're going to talk about the top five reasons as to why I use cinema lenses in certain cases versus still lenses. So number one on the list is the filmic look. So I touched on this a little bit when I talked about shallow depth of field and all that stuff, but aside from depth of field and how fast your lens is, the filmic look that everyone chases after typically comes from anamorphic glass, but you can also get it from vintage lenses like the lens I've covered in the past, like the Helios uh, 442, um, or really any cinema lens that has some type of character to it. When I say character, I mean, um, you know, fringing on the edges of the frame where like it has this like distinct subtle vignette almost also the, the different bokeh swirls there's a lot of center focus but it gets kind of choppy towards the edges um, a lot of people like that look and a lot of people have been chasing that look for their independent projects passion projects or just in general people just like the way that looks so a lot of people go for like the cook lenses um, a lot of lenses that have more characteristics that aren't too sterile um, that aren't you know super sharp and clinical another reason is the uniform thread and size so when you get a entire kit of cinema lenses this is actually from SLR magic this is their micro prime cine lens this one is the 50 millimeter t 1.2 so all of the micro primes in this set of lenses are the same size and have the same 82 millimeter thread size um, I'm actually filming on one right now this is the, the 25 uh, millimeter that I'm filming on right now um, but that makes it easy to swap out filters map boxes um, also when you're doing lens swaps all the lenses are identical in size so that way you don't have to reset your uh, focus pulling mechanism you don't have to reset really anything else because you're swapping out focal lengths but you're keeping the same uniform size which makes it easy if you have multiple multiple people on set you know camera ops first acs they can help swap out your gear and without having to reset the entire camera every time you want to get a different look um, so if you're just a run and gun kind of filmmaker, that really doesn't you know pertain too much to you. Um, but if you do plan on eventually you know having more people on set um, or you know just having more hands, then you're gonna need something that's uniform that makes the job easier for everyone and not just yourself. Okay, so when you're filming on any camera that has autofocus, like my FX9 has autofocus, uh, you know, the A7 III has autofocus. A lot of cameras have autofocus nowadays, which is great. It's a great useful tool if, um, you know, you don't have someone else on set helping you pull focus, or if you, you know, you, as you know, DPs nowadays and people that are filming their own passion projects, we have to worry about composing the shot, grabbing focus, we have to worry about audio, we have to worry about so many different things. So having an extra tool on autofocus and reliable autofocus is really nice. Um, but one thing that we do end up losing a lot of time with that is the organic intentional focus. Say for instance, you know, someone walks across your frame, the camera doesn't know that you don't want them to be in focus, so it jumps to that person's face, it jumps to that person's eye. Um, say for instance, you have multiple people in a frame and it focuses on the person that's maybe three steps behind the person you want the camera to focus on. So having manual focus and you can uh, is, is good because you can have intentional focus. You can direct the viewer's eye to what you want them to be focusing on. So it helps you you know, motivate your story and push the story forward. It's more important for narrative work, but um, it's also, also really good for, uh, for music videos as well. Intentional focus is good in general. Um, and with the A7S 3 they've kind of made that more of a focus through software and they're trying to figure out a way for, you know, you can have different transition speeds between focusing from the background to the foreground. It's obviously um, a pain point for people that use autofocus continuously, um, but that's the reason why cinema lenses and manual lenses and manual focus is great because you can have that intentional focus and direct the viewer's eye to what you want them to be focused on at that particular second in your film. Now let's talk about focus pulling. So we touched on this a little bit earlier when we discussed operating within a team, but focus pulling is really, really difficult on still lenses versus cinema lenses. If you look at this, 
the cinema lens has these grooved teeth in here so which makes it easy to have your, your focus, focus wheel attached to this and you can easily maneuver and manipulate focus whereas on still lenses they have the rubber because typically you're doing this with your with your hands so you need the tactile rubber grip on there and the teeth aren't optimal for a focus wheel um, so you put a ring on this and then you can hopefully you know the friction allows you to manipulate the focus that way but another thing that's really difficult about this is that the focus points on here um, the uh, how do you say the breathing or the the distance between focus points is like millimeters because you're typically taking stills with this with this lens so that way you need to be quick and precise and autofocus allows you to quickly manipulate the focus with a millimeter twist of the focus wheel um, and also with this once you get to the infinity point of your focus it keeps spinning it's infinite so um, if you have any focus marks on here it's almost impossible to keep them and it makes it really difficult to for a focus puller to use a still lens for focus whereas with the cinema lens there are hard stops so you can once you know you get to the infinity point all the way to the other end of the focus it's a hard stop and it stops there so you can all the markings you have on here are consistent you can still use all the markings for the second person or the first ac that's pulling focus they can see okay all my markings are here everything's set um so that's another reason that you know it's 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 beneficial to use um, a cinema lens is because it's easier for focus pulling and then also it's it's easier to see the difference between um, the infinity point versus uh, all the way on the other end of the focus focus ring because um, those those focus points aren't millimeters in between each other um, humans operating this at the end of the day so they have to be able to manipulate manipulate this and see the difference it makes on camera um, and it's easier to do that with this because it's intended for a human to use it versus a computer algorithm telling you you know this telling the lens that this is in focus and making that quick millimeter adjustment the last reason i'll say cinema lenses have a slight advantage over still lenses is because they typically have a wider aperture um, this is the t1.2 versus um you know i've also have cinema lenses that are you know t t2 or t1.2 oh t9.5 stuff like that so they're a little bit faster letting a lot more light and then also the the measurement or the rating of t stops versus f stops that's probably a video in itself but um the transmission all the way from the front element to the sensor is what a t stop is so it measures like a more accurate description of how much light is hitting your sensor um versus the f stop to my knowledge correct me if i'm wrong in the comments um goes off of the front aperture or the, or the front diameter of the lens um, and how much light is hitting the front of the lens versus how much light is hitting the sensor um, so typically t-stops are a bit more accurate in that case um, it typically only accounts for like a, a third of a stop of light um, so it's not a huge difference um, but in, in most cases what i've noticed is that i'm able to get a lot more light to my sensor when using cinema glass um, even say for instance if you you know purchase like i have here the uh sigma 85 1.4 this is a really fast lens um that i enjoy using but in certain situations i know for sure that this 1.2 is going to get more light to the sensor and even some lenses that are t2 will appear brighter than this 1.4 if that makes sense um but there are reasons to all these tools to be honest with you you're not in the wrong for using a still lens or or a cinema lens but just knowing the reasons why you need this versus that is important um, but i still with that being said i still use still lenses on a lot of my video projects because i do a lot of stuff that's run and gun i love the eye autofocus in my camera if you have a camera that has phase detect autofocus um with eye priority then you know you'd be a fool not to use it in certain situations um but yeah uh that's my two cents on the five best reasons as to why you should be using a cinema lens over your still lens this is part one of this video we're going to do another part where we talk about still lenses next time but that's about it from you guys if you made it to this point of the video you should definitely be subscribed i don't know why you wouldn't be especially if you want to see more content like this and until next time stay fresh peace